Singapore Polytechnic, a leading institute of technology in Singapore. 65-year-old Mr. Lopeng Chum has been creating jewellery marbles in the Modis Lab here for the last 25 years. A famous metallurgist who's done numerous consultation projects for major shipyards, he's best known as the scientist who created the world's first purple gold. Mr. Lowe's lifelong affair with metallurgy started in the 70s. While working as a welding expert in major shipyards around the world, he saw the infinite potential and possible applications embedded in the metals. Mr. Lowe started brewing the idea of creating purple gold in 1976, when his lecturer at the University of Wisconsin challenged him to find a way to stabilize purple gold, an aluminium gold material known to be very brittle. However, it was only in 1998 when he finally devoted all his focus on getting it right. His vision was to create purple gold strong enough to be shaped into any form of jewellery. This would be a breakthrough in the global metallurgy world as nobody before him had succeeded in doing so. This phase diagram tells you that it's an intermetallic compound. It's a compound. And not only that, this compound is so-called ionic compound. Any ionic compounds is known by any metallurgist as to be very brittle and very hard. Throughout the 80s and 90s, Mr. Lowe couldn't find anyone who could create a commercially viable purple gold. After I return, as I travel along, I look around, whether in a jewelry shop or whatever, you know, where there's any purple gold. But surprisingly, you know, I found nothing. He became determined to find out if he could create this mysterious gold aluminium and reduce its porosity so that it could be turned into malleable jewellery pieces. To make gold purple, Mr Lowe had to mix aluminium and gold. He learned that the compound is the hardest with a mix of 78.5% gold and 22.5% aluminium. But getting the right mix to a malleable purple gold proved to be highly complex. Each combination creates a different outcome in the alloy. Mr. Lowe poured over many textbooks in order to achieve the perfect formula. The creation of purple gold was fraught with difficulties. Besides creating the perfect mix, Professor Lowe next had to perfect the firing process in order to achieve the purple colour. He started experimenting with simple firing techniques, using a blowtorch to melt the gold aluminium alloy. But this method didn't give him the purple colour he sought. Mr. Lowe was forced to change his strategy. Different temperatures produce different results. The intermetallic compound turns into different colours depending on the heat. Mr. Lowe needed a furnace that could melt the gold alloy and provide the right heat to create the desired colour. In 1998, Mr. Lowe and his students made their own furnace. This first-generation furnace could be fired up to 5,000 degrees Celsius, the right heat for combining the two metals seamlessly and creating the colour purple. Even with the right firing process and equipment, Mr. Lowe still had to reduce the porosity and improve the toughness of the metal. I was thinking it was quite happy. It did form some bubble gold, but then as I said, the same thing happens. It's very brittle, it's very porous. Retracing his steps, Mr. Lowe had to find the perfect purple gold mix that could be shaped into jewellery pieces. He decided to mix other metals into the gold aluminium alloy to improve its toughness. First, he tried silicon. Then he used cobalt, a hard metal that is used in the preparation of magnetic, wear-resistant, high-strength alloys. Manganese, another metal that would harden purple gold, was also used. None of his experiments worked. And then one metal came to his mind, palladium, which has a tarnish and heat-resistant property. To achieve the perfect mix, Mr. Lowe spent many sleepless nights trying out different formulas. He spent 19 hours and more each day in the lab. While others rested, he continued to work seven days a week. It was this sheer dedication that led to his breakthrough in the creation of Purple Gold. Those are involved in R&D work. If they're the passion, they have to work hard. There's, there's, there's no uh, shortcut. It's very often. I came to the, the, the lab 4 or 5 a.m. is very common. 
Then one day, like many others before, he opened the furnace to check on the alloy. Only this time, he saw the desired purple colour. And when tested, it had the right malleability. Success at last! All his hard work had finally paid off. However, his joy was short-lived when he realised the purple gold he'd created, an 18-carat purple gold, had already been patented by a Japanese scientist in 1987. So that caused us a great disappointment. So what, what am I going to do now? I, I was thinking, why not? Forget it. Instead of getting an 18 carat, why not we try a 19 carat? Now, he had to start over once more. His challenge, getting the perfect mix again. This time, the right mix for 19 carat purple gold was 80% gold and 20% other metals. However, with more gold added to the mixture, the colour changed drastically. Mr Lowe had to change his methodology to get the desired result. Not only was Mr Lowe's work painstaking, it came with risks. A fatal miscalculation caused the furnace to explode, injuring his shoulder and torso. Unfortunately, the, the crucible at the time was contaminated. That causes a major explosion in the tree. I got my back squandered. Just burn. Green, the, the, the shirt was actually burned everywhere, all over parts. So there was a, quite a nasty explosion. In 1999, one and a half years after the creation of the 18 karat purple gold, Mr. Lowe's 20 year old dream was finally fulfilled. Right here in this very lab, the world's first strong and stable 19 karat purple gold was ready to be made into fine jewelry pieces. What Mr. Lowe didn't know back then was that his creation would become a successful commercial product, revolutionising how gold is perceived by jewellery lovers around the world. In 2000, Mr. Lopeng Chum became the patent holder of the world's first 19-carat purple gold.